Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In a previous video some time ago, I showed off my home lab and you guys seemed to really enjoy that quite a bit. And one of the components of my home lab was sync thing and you guys really seem to want to know more about that. Now I did do a series of videos in the past about sync thing, but you know, it's it was a while ago, so I think it's time to go ahead and update that. And that's what I'm going to do in this video is walk you guys through the process of setting up sync thing to sync files between your machines. And I'm going to do this all in one tutorial video. I'm not going to set this up into multiple videos or multiple parts. I'm just going to throw it all in this one video. So by the end of this video, you will have a working sync thing set up ready to go. So let's go ahead and dive right in to setting up sync thing. So before we continue, I want to take a moment to talk through the scenario that we will be working through throughout the video. Obviously the whole point is to sync all of our computers together, but I'm going to show you guys the layout that we will be creating in this video. Now I'm not the best when it comes to diagramming anything, but essentially in this scenario we have four computers. And however many computers you have doesn't really matter. Because again, we're just trying to synchronize all of our computers together. So how do we do that? Obviously the answer is sync thing. That's included in the title of the video after all. Sync thing will help us get this done, but how will it do that? Now one way that you can actually set this up is to have every computer sync to all the other computers. And that might look something like this. In this scenario, secondary PC is syncing to den PC, which is syncing to bedroom PC. They're all syncing to each other here. There's nothing wrong with this setup. It's not the setup that I use though. I'm going to actually walk you guys through my setup in this video. But you could set it up this way if you wanted to. But what I like to do instead is to have a central file server. Now obviously not everybody is going to have a central file server in their house. You could instead use your main desktop or your main computer as the file server in this example. It doesn't actually have to be a real server. It could just be whatever your daily driver is. That could be fine. But in this example, what we have is the star topology. All of the PCs are syncing to the file server. None of them are syncing to each other. In my opinion, I find that this way works the best. This is how I've been running sync thing for several years now. It works great. Now the way that this scenario would play out, for example, let's just say you are on your bedroom PC and you update a file. That file will get synced to the file server. Once it's synced to the file server, then the file server will send it to the other computers and they'll all have that same file. So then you can go over here to your office PC, open that same file, make some changes. That'll go back to the file server and then it'll go to the other PCs and everybody will be up to date. So there is one potential issue with this layout. I don't really think that you'll run into this, but hypothetically, if you are updating a file on your bedroom PC, and then you are also updating that file on your office PC at the same time, you would then have a conflict because basically both computers would have different changes and that would be, well, a conflict. Now, I don't know about you, but it's really hard to use two computers at the exact same time or to be in two rooms at the exact same time. I mean, obviously we are IT people and if there's a way to find out how to do that, we will. But this is not a scenario I ever run into, honestly, and I don't really think you will either. So I think that this will be fine and this is the way that I'm going to show you. Again, I've been running it this way for a very long time. I find that it makes more sense that you have a central device that's basically in the middle of all of your others and they all sync to that central device, whatever that central device happens to be. Now to work through the setup, I've created three virtual machines. I have this one right here as basically a server. It's running Ubuntu server. And then I have Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2. So basically two desktops, two laptops, however you want to imagine that with a central file server in the middle. These are all running Ubuntu 2004, 
but you don't have to be running Ubuntu. Sync thing works on Mac, it works on Windows, it works on other Linux distributions. So you can go ahead and install it on whatever you want. But this is a Linux channel and I am a Linux guy, so I'm going to show you the way to do it on Linux. But the only way that this should really be different is how it's installed. After you get Sync thing installed, then everything else should match, at least as far as the configuration, because it's managed through a web console. So the only difference might be what it's installed on and what web browser you will use to access it, but it's essentially the same thing. So the first thing we will want to do is open up a web browser. And I'll go ahead and make this a more reasonable size. I'll paste the URL in right here. But essentially what we are doing is we want to go ahead and install sync things. So I'll press enter. And if we scroll down here, we have an entire section for Debian and Ubuntu packages. But if you are using something else, you'll need to follow different directions. But I'm going to go ahead and follow through the instructions on this page. And what this is essentially doing is it's basically walking us through adding the sync thing repository and then installing sync thing from that repository. Now on Ubuntu itself, if I go ahead and bring up a terminal here, if I do apt search sync thing, I haven't even installed the repository yet. You can see that we have some results. In fact, sync thing is offered here as a download through the Ubuntu repositories. And again, I haven't actually installed the repository for sync thing yet. This is actually being offered through Ubuntu's repository. So you don't actually need to set up this repository and go through this process, but I highly recommend that you do because it's very often the case that whatever is offered in the default repositories is going to be out of date. And a sync thing installation generally doesn't want to connect to other nodes that are of very old versions. I mean, it will and it will work, but every now and then you might run into problems. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and install the repository on all three of these machines. And since I already have Ubuntu 2 up on the screen right now, let's go ahead and start with that one. And because I'm too lazy to enable copying and pasting in VirtualBox, which apparently is still not enabled by default, I'm just going to open the same web page here in the VM. So again, we'll scroll down here to the section that tells us how to do this on Ubuntu, and we're going to add the key. So I'll copy this command. I need to install curl first. So sudo apt install curl. It's not installed by default for some reason. Should be pretty quick and we're already done and then what I could do is go ahead and paste in the command that I copied here and it went ahead and added that key for me that was pretty easy so now we're ready to move on to the second command which we'll go ahead and copy which is this one right here this is going to add the actual repository I'll paste that in and then press enter and that should be there and just like it says, we are going to do an apt update, an apt install sync thing. You don't actually have to type the dash git anymore, even though their instructions say that it'll still work. So we'll simply do sudo apt update and then sudo apt install sync thing. And this should install pretty quickly. It's not that big of a download. And it's installed on Ubuntu PC 2. I should get that installed here on the central server. I don't have a graphical user environment, so I will type IPA to get the IP address, which I have right there. I will open up a terminal. I'll make the font size bigger for you guys. Perhaps that's a bit too big. What I'm going to do is SSH. The IP should be right there. There it is. I'll type that in. And 
now I'm connected to the Ubuntu server as you see here. And I could do the same thing. I could basically just go here, copy this command. And just like before, I will need curl. Let's go ahead and get that installed. And it's already on the server version here, so I guess I didn't need to run that at all. So I will paste in that magic command from earlier, get that key added, copy the next command as you would guess, just like before. Then we'll do sudo apt update, and then I'll just go ahead and do a one-liner for this, then sudo apt install sync thing, enter. And now we have sync thing installed on the server. So rather than have you watch me go through that again on the third VM, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so sync thing is installed on each of the three VMs. So what you'll do is go ahead and install sync thing on whatever devices you want to go ahead and install it on. And to make it easier, I've connected to each of the three VMs in this terminal window. I have this first tab connected to the server. The second one is going to be the first Ubuntu PC. And then obviously we have the second Ubuntu PC in the third tab. So we can go ahead and get this set up. We can verify that sync thing is installed by just typing which sync thing just like that. It is a binary in user bin as you can see here. So to that end, we should be good to go to go ahead and get started. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I wanted to take a moment to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode has been my infrastructure provider for well over a year now, and has just recently announced their own managed Kubernetes service. Now you can combine Linode's ease of use and simple pricing with the infrastructure efficiency of Kubernetes. With the Linode Kubernetes engine, you can get your infrastructure and workloads up and running in minutes instead of days, and scale resources in real time to meet your infrastructure needs. With Linode's managed Kubernetes engine, pricing is simple. Only pay for what you use. And with Linode's 99.9% .9 uptime SLA and bundled transfer, you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, GCP, and Azure. Designed with the open source ecosystem of Kubernetes, the Linode Kubernetes engine supports integration with tools like Helm, operators, and more. To help you get started with Kubernetes, Linode gives you access to in-depth documentation, video tutorials, and webinars. Go ahead and sign up at linode.com slash learnlinuxtv to get a $60 60-day credit to test out LKE or any other of Linode's products. I really appreciate Linode's continued support of Learn Linux TV, so go ahead and check them out. You won't regret it. Now, let's get back to the video. So now what we'll work on is to go ahead and start sync thing. But before we do that, I think that it's better to go ahead and set up a systemd unit that will automate the process of starting sync thing for us so that we don't have to worry about it beyond the initial time. And to do that, we can go ahead and navigate to this website. This is basically the GitHub page for sync thing. Specifically, this is the Linux systemd section. And I'll have a link to this in the description down below, so you can go ahead and go to this as well. And we can use this to go ahead and make it start automatically. So what we'll do is go to system right here, and we can see that we have sync thing at dot service. So I'll click on that, and we can see the actual service file right here. So I'm going to click on raw, and this is going to strip the website components and show us the actual file. We're going to need to go ahead and download this. So I'll just do wget, then I'll paste in that URL, press enter, and we have it. And just to make sure, there it is. And we can cat the contents of that file to make sure that it matches, and it does. And again, all I did was just copy the URL on this page so I could use wget to download it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And also the same thing here. 
And with that, we have this service file downloaded on each of the three VMs. That's pretty cool. So now that we have the file, we need to go ahead and move it where it can actually be found by system control or system CTL, which is the command that you use if you didn't already know to manage systemd units. And what we'll do is sudo chown. We want to make that owned by root. And then we'll do sudo move. We'll move that file to slash etsy systemd system. Press enter. And then we'll do sudo systemctl daemon reload. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the other machines. All right, and that should do it. So now we can actually check the status of the unit with systemctl status sync thing and at and then our username and it's not running it's not enabled but the systemd unit does exist so we can go ahead and actually enable this so on each of the machines we will run sudo systemctl enable sync thing at and then the username and because I'm lazy I'm just going to copy this command and then run it on each of the others And what that did was basically tell systemd to automatically start sync thing when we start the machine, but it's not actually running. As you can see here, the process is inactive, it's dead, it's not running. So what we can do is simply change the enable to start. And I'm going to copy the command. I'll press enter enter and enter. Now if I switch up here to one of these VMs, I'll just use this one as an example. I'll go ahead and close all these windows here. If I open up the home directory, we can see that we have a sync folder that was not there before that's created automatically by SyncThing. That is the default location for storing files and sharing files. So if I open up a web browser here, then navigate to localhost colon 8384, which is the port that it runs on by default, then you can see that SyncThing is actually running. So I'm going to say no for the reporting utility there. It shows our default folder. It shows the path, which we already know is in our home directory. It's not shared, which means we're not connected to any of the other instances. So if I do the same thing here, just go ahead and go to localhost. And we have the same thing here on the second PC. So it looks like everything is working and even if I go to the server here, we have the sync directory, although it's really hard to see. I should have probably have just done that here. There we are on the server. So each of these machines has sync thing running and it is basically exposing a default directory for that synchronization. So what we should do right now is just go ahead and set up the syncing relationship between these three machines. Now one potential problem here if I open up a browser and let's just navigate to the IP address of the server, for example, which in my case is going to be 172.16.250.127 colon 8384. This will fail, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. The site can't be reached. It refused to connect. And the reason why is because by default, SyncThing does not allow the service to be modified or controlled from outside the machine. So here I am on my System76 Lemur laptop trying to connect to this VM. It's not going to allow that by default for security reasons. So what we need to do is go into the .config folder. And inside there we'll see at least the sync thing directory. So inside there you see a bunch of files. So what we need to do is use nano or whatever text editor you want to edit the config.xml file. And if I scroll down, 
we're going to see where that restriction actually is. And it's this line right here. It's basically showing that the port of 8384 is only listening on localhost, so we can fix that by just changing all of the octets to zeros right here. We can save the file and then close out. And then I'll go back to the home directory. We can do sudo systemctl restart sync thing at and then the username to take advantage of that new setting. And now we should actually be able to access the web console and it automatically refreshed and there we go. It's asking us again, do you want to allow anonymous reporting? No, I do not. And it activated this warning message. It's basically saying that you have enabled access from outside the machine, but there's no password. I do recommend you set a password. So that's pretty easy to do. You could just click on settings right here and go over here to GUI. I'll just put in my first name here as the user. And then I will go ahead and put in my super secret password. Start browser is pretty useless for a server with no GUI. That basically means that anytime sync thing starts, it'll automatically bring up your default web browser and show the web console for it. I don't like that, so I typically just disable it, but that's up to you. I'll go ahead and save it. I'll close that there. We need to go ahead and log in with our new password. And we should be good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other nodes. Now, I don't really recommend that you do this unless you really do want to expose the web interface for all of your machines. You probably don't need to do it, but go ahead and do that if you'd like. All right, so if everything went according to my master plan here, I should be able to do the same thing and access the other two PCs, or VMs in my case, in the browser. And I should be able to type the name in my case because I do have DNS set up. So I should be able to do Ubuntu PC1, my domain, the port, and I'll go ahead and copy this here and press enter. And then I'll paste that over here, change the one to a two, press enter. And then again, I can go ahead and set up the username and the password on both. So now I can access SyncThing on each of these machines through a web browser and access the web console. So that's pretty cool. Now I mentioned before that we are going to go ahead and use the server in this example as the central location for files. So what I'm going to do is just click up here to Actions, Show ID, and I'm just going to copy this long string of characters right here and close. And then on each of these machines, I will add a remote device right here. I'll paste it in. I'm just going to call it server. You can call it whatever you want. And then sharing, you can go ahead and share the default folder if you want to, and I will. I'll do the same thing here as well. I'll add a remote device, paste that same ID in here. I'll call it server because that's what it's connecting to. And I will share the default folder as well on this machine. Then here on the server, at some point, it should actually confirm that we do want to allow those two PCs to sync with this device. And sure enough, there it is. I will add device. Then on the sharing tab, I will share the same default folder. And now we have a prompt for the first one here. So again, same thing. And we can see on the server, we have both PCs here. It will say disconnected for a bit until they start their synchronization. And sometimes it can actually take a minute, so we'll be patient and let it go. And eventually, once Ubuntu PC 1 connects, then both of those machines should be set up to sync with this server. And there we go. Now all three are set up. So what I can do is go here to the server, and we can see that we have the sync folder, so I will go inside there. And then I will do, let's say, echo sync thing is awesome. And I will echo that to testfile.txt, just like that. And really quickly, the file is not there yet.
but it is here already on the second PC. I was trying to be faster than the sync process here. It's on the first one as well. And of course, we can cap the contents of the file. We can see that it is the same file, but what I could also do is echo, and so is Linux, with a double greater than symbol to the test file to add another line. Now we have those two lines there. And let's see if it's already synced. It hasn't yet. Has it synced to the server yet? It did. And did it sync to the first PC? And it did. And then I'll go ahead and remove the file altogether. And then we'll just double check. It usually happens pretty quickly. And I'm impatient, so I'm just going to hit ls over and over again. And it's gone. And is it gone here? It is. So you can see that the synchronization is actually working between each of these machines here, or virtual machines in my case. Sync thing seems to be working just fine. Now there are a few other options that we could consider here. So what I'm going to do just go back to my home directory. We have some directories that are created by default on Ubuntu. For example, we have documents. We don't have that by default on Ubuntu server, but we could simply make that directory just fine. And it doesn't even have to be the same name. And we already have that folder here. We already have that folder, whoops. We already have that folder here. So I'm going to use documents as an example. And then we'll go ahead and add that to our instances here. So for the server, I'm going to add a folder. I'm going to call it documents. I usually just make that the same name. And then it asks for the folder path. That is the folder path for that. So I'll click save. And then I'll edit this shared folder right here. And when I click on sharing on the server, I see the nodes that are synchronizing with the server. I could simply check the boxes next to all the nodes that I want to also receive that folder as well. I'll click Save. And then at some point, each of these two PCs right here, VMs, whatever, will get a notice that that is available. And it usually happens within a minute. And it looks like we already have a message here. I could tell by the black exclamation mark. And sure enough, it's basically saying that server which is what I cleverly named the server, wants to share folder documents. So I'll click Add. And then we can go ahead and choose a path. It's going to default to the name, and it's showing the correct path right here. That's pretty cool. I can go ahead and simply save to go ahead and create that relationship. It's going to disconnect the server, but it'll reconnect, and then it'll start syncing the documents directory. And I can add as many directories as I'd like. Here on PC1, we have the same thing. The server is offering to share that file with it. I'll go ahead and add it. The path is correct. That's great. And also, we could go ahead and configure some additional options here. So file versioning, you can go ahead and check the documentation if you're curious, but I'll give you a high-level overview. What this allows you to do is control what happens when a newer version of a file overwrites the current one. By default, the, um, the shares here have no file versioning set up. If we click on this, we have several different options. If you click the Help button here, it's going to go over the different scenarios here and explain what each of these options do. Now, what I like to set up and what I'll show you is I like to do staggered file versioning, which basically allows me to keep all versions of files up to a certain point I'll just set it to 30 days, for example, so I can go back to previous versions of files. And I highly recommend this because if you have very important files and something gets deleted, then you're pretty much out of luck if you don't have something like this enabled. And I will set the maximum age to the number of days that I think is basically fair for how important the folder actually is. So in this hypothetical example, I wanna create, I wanna keep 30 days of information here we also have ignore patterns. So if there's a particular file that you don't want to sync, 
You can put some information here or some text here to try to basically block certain files from being synchronized. We also have documentation for that as well. And we have some advanced options here. We also have folder type send and receive. Send and receive is a two-way sync as you, would, as you would think it would be, but you can also do send only if you want it to be a situation where this system here is only sending changes to other nodes. It doesn't accept changes back. And the opposite, of course, is receive only. So you can go ahead and set that accordingly if that's something that matters to you. You could also set the share to ignore permissions. So if you are running the sync thing share on a folder that is on a FAT file system, for example, that doesn't support Unix permissions, you could check this box to ignore those particular types of changes. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save here. And now the Documents folder is added to each of these, and they're ready to sync. Here on the server, Ubuntu PC 1 disconnected. Because we just set up a new folder, it will reconnect. We'll just go ahead and wait for that, and we'll go ahead and test it out. And now it's up to date. So I'll go ahead and go up here to this other screen and let's get logged in. And I left it on the sync thing window here. So it's basically asking me to log in. No problem. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And this is basically out of date here, probably because I left that open. I'm going to just refresh the page and make sure that everything is clean. And it is. So if I open up the file manager, we still have our sync folder here. And this documents directory was already there. And you can go ahead and set up all the other folders as sync targets as well if you'd like, even the desktop folder um, if you'd want to do that. But in the documents directory here, I can go ahead and create a new folder, for example, call it test just so we have some kind of change. And then I can watch here on this one, I could watch those folders actually get created here as well. And there they are. And if I go ahead and delete test, I should see that one get deleted here. Let's go ahead and see if that happens. And it just did. And that's pretty cool. So now what I'll do is just open a terminal. I'll just echo test to test file. I'll call it test file 2, although it doesn't really matter. It's the only one. And we have that file on the first PC. And let's just see if it gets added here. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up with the text editor. I'm going to add a bunch, a few more lines here, just to have some kind of changes. So what I'm going to do here is hold Control and press H with the file manager in front. And that's going to enable the view of hidden folders and hidden files. We see this hidden directory right here, ST versions. It begins with a period, which means it's a hidden file if you didn't already know. This is where your previous versions are going to go when something is overwritten. So I'll go ahead and double click on it. And you can see we have a file here, test file 2 with some characters after it. If I open that up. We can see that this is the original file that got overwritten because the current one has those new lines in it, but this one doesn't. So again, if you want to retrieve previous files, this is how you can do that. Now there's definitely more settings and customizations that you can do with SyncThing that are beyond the scope of this video. And the goal was to go ahead and show you the process of setting up sync thing and syncing files. And we've done that. Mission complete. It's set up. It's ready to go. And it is syncing files. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to think of some fun, clever, or useful use cases for sync thing to set up on your network. In my case, I even install sync thing on my RetroPie units. And for those of you that don't know, RetroPie is a Linux distribution for retro gaming. I set it up on my RetroPie units to automatically sync the save files from one machine to another so I could basically start a game on one RetroPie, continue at the same place on another. And there's other use cases I'm sure you can think of for sync thing. It's a very awesome piece of software. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video.